Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So, in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day, and today's problem is sequence of sequence and it is a medium level problem. So, the problem says that we have been given n uh, spaces or an array of size n, and we have also been given an integer m. Now, we have to build a sequence of that particular size n or basically fill that array such that sequence of i plus 1 is at least twice of sequence of i. That means if I have an element a, then the next element after it should be at least twice of a, that is 2a. Each element should be greater than 0. That means the minimum value for the first index will be 1 and sequence of i is less than equals to m. That means all the elements are less than equals to m. Now we have to calculate the total number of ways to fill that particular array or the total number of ways to build such sequences. Now let us see how we can solve this problem. Let me just reiterate the conditions. So the first condition is that uh, uh, sequence of i, yeah. So let us say we have a of i, a of i plus 1 should be at least a of i times 2. The second condition was that a of i is greater than 0 and the third condition was a of i is less than equals to a. So let us see how we can solve this particular problem while keeping these three conditions in mind. So we try, will try to solve this problem with dp where I am defining the dp state i and j. Here i, i is denoting my current position. So out of the n elements at which position I am and m is denoting the current position value. So I can have a value from 1 to m. So j will be denoting that value. So dp of ij is going to denote total number of ways, total number of ways if I am at the ith position and the current element is j, right. So this is what my dp of ij is going to denote. Now if I reach let us say position of uh, last n minus 1, if I consider 0 based indexing then n minus 1 will be the last position. If I reach this particular position, I am just writing the base case and my j is less than equals to m and j is greater than 0, right. So if all of these conditions are satisfied, that is that means I have found a valid way, valid way and in this base condition, I have to return 1, that means this is one valid way. Now where will my answer will store? So my answer should be the summation of dp of 0, 1 up to dp of 0 m right. So what am I doing here? I am starting with position 0 but I can start with any element right. I can start with 1, I can start with 2, I can start with any element till m because all of these are valid elements. So my answer will be the sum of all of these positions. This is what I am trying to say. So let us see how we can solve this problem. Let me just create a helper function. So I am just writing the memoized code first to help you understand the transition states right. So let us say I have received dp and uh, i and j two variables. Now if, if i is equals to is equals to n minus 1, I said we have reached the base condition and then we have to return 1. If dp of i j is not equals to minus 1, then we just have to return dp of i j otherwise we need to find our answer. So we initialize dp of i j with 0 and then we go through all the values. So let us say we have a variable k. The minimum value we can form is twice of j. If the current value is j at this particular position, the minimum value next value should be twice of j. Now k can be up to m. So up, k is less than m plus 1 and k plus plus, right. So k will now have all the possible values for the next position. So dp of ij plus is equals to helper of i plus 1 and k. So you see k is all the possible values for the next position starting from twice of j till less than m plus 1. And I am just calling my helper function on the next position and passing on this particular value k. So I just at the end I just have to return dp of ij. This is how you can basically solve this particular problem. And you see here I did not have to check whether my m value or the value of j is under the required constraints or not because I am uh, like only passing the valid values. You see I am starting from twice of j and going till less than m plus 1. That means the value of j whenever I receive at any particular index i, it will always be the valid values, right. 
So this is how you can solve this particular problem. I hope that this part was not very difficult because I am doing nothing. I am just initializing dp of ij and I am just going through all the values from twice of j till less than m plus 1 and passing on to the next index with that particular value k. Right. So the transition states were also easy as well. Right. So now let us have a look at the iterative code which is again very very simple. I have created a dp array of size n cross m plus 1 and now at position n minus 1 which is my last position for all the values from 1 to m. I have marked dp of n minus 1 i as 1. So you see I am not marking dp of n minus 1 0 because that is an invalid case. I am only marking values starting from 1 to less than m plus 1. Now uh, we can ignore these for loops for now, outer for loops. Inside this inner for loop since I, all the values are already initialized to 0 here in the dp array in vector initialization that is why I did not have to explicitly set it but I still have the uh, for loop or key. So it is starting from 2j and going till less than m plus 1 and just uh, moving on in the forward direction. So dp of ij plus is equals to dp of i plus 1 k right. Now uh, you can clearly see that my current state i dp of i is depending upon dp of i plus 1. That is why this particular for loop outer for loop for y has to be in reverse order because state n has to be calculated before n minus 1 right. So here am I a loop is starting from n minus 2 because I have already calculated for n minus 1. So I start from n minus 2 and go till greater than minus 1. At the end I can just return the summation of dp of 0 right. So all the values in dp of 0 will be my answer. So this is nothing but the, just the summation function accumulate in C++ just sums up all the values starting from this particular iterator and then going till this particular iterator. So this is the second one is not included and this is the starting value of the sum. So I have to start my sum with 0 that is why I pass 0 right. So let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and this solution is absolutely correct. So you see it passes all the test cases and this solution is correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.